David Smith here with one more flip classroom math video. Three tips before we start. First, you can increase or decrease the playback speed if that helps you get through the video. Second, you can pause the video at any time to catch up with your notes. Third, you can turn on the captions or watch my words go by on the bottom of your screen. Today's lesson is the beginning in a series of lessons where we're going to cover trigonometric equations. And we're going to use some identities in there and we're going to solve trigonometric equations. So let's start with a really straightforward one. We have sine theta equals 0.6. So we want to find out what theta is for the range of angles between 0 and 360 degrees. So let's take a look at the first easiest one to find. Remember, when you know what sine theta equals, you can take the inverse of the value and that will give you theta. So go ahead and pull out your calculator. You're gonna to need to do a bunch of calculations with this video and find out what theta equals. All right, so if you did that successfully, if your calculator was set to degrees, then you got 36.9 degrees. Woohoo! Are we done? No because here's our range. We want to find all of the values of theta for which sine theta is 36.9 degrees. Now, if you want a little bit of critical thinking stretching, go ahead and pause the video and find one more and maybe think about the last lesson that we had in this class. All right, so here's a unit circle diagram with my 36.9 degrees. And then you remember, sine of the angle is this distance there. That is my 0.6, right? 0.6 there. Now in our previous lesson, we got this very straightforward identity that sine theta is the same as sine of 180 minus theta. Let's mark that on our diagram. 180 is there, so 180 minus theta would be right there. This is 36.9 degrees going up like that, and that would also be 180 minus 36.9. So that angle is 143 degrees, and that's gonna be the same distance there, the same distance up off the x-axis, another 0.6. Now, if you think back to a previous lesson, find me one more angle that would give us, the sine of that angle would give us 0.6 got to be in this range of degrees. All right, so here's another one with cosine. Now if cosine theta equals negative 0.76, I want you to find theta inside of zero theta and two pi. Now we're going to do this one in radians, so go ahead and maybe set your calculator to radians and do that. There's two angles that you can find. Okay, with my calculator set to radians, I did the inverse cosine of minus 0.76, and what I get is 2.43 radians. Now remember, it's one pi radian to get all the way here, so pi is 3.14, so we're less than that, so it's gonna put us in the third quadrant, 2.43, and here's our theta, and check it out, this is negative 0.76 along the x-axis. Remember the cosine value is, the, is along the x-axis. It's the x-coordinate of the point on the unit circle. All right, now pause the video and find the second one that's in zero to two pi radians. All right, here we go. So what I remembered was that we had this identity from the last lesson, cosine theta equals cosine of 360 minus theta, two pi is 360, I'm in radians because this problem is in radians. So I did two pi minus theta. So here's two pi minus my theta, which was 2.43, and I get 3.85 radians. Now what that angle is, is it's this one right here, coming all the way around to get to that point. Remember, both these points are minus 0.76. So they're 0.76 this way from the y-axis along the x-axis. So, and then let's do a little check. 3.85 radians is gonna be a little more than 180 degrees, 
which is 3.14 radians. So that makes sense. We're 3.85 radians down to here. All right, I'd like to give you two practice problems working with what we just did. First one, you have sine theta equals 0.2, and I want you to find the possible values of theta from zero to 360 degrees. You wanna be in degrees for this one. And then this one is cosine theta equals 0.15 between zero and two pi radians. Now remember, you can change your calculator into radians to do your calculation, or you can just convert by using pi and keep your calculator in degrees, whichever one you like. Okay, let's see how you did. So this inverse sine of 0.2 just gives me 11.5 degrees to three sig figs. And then I subtract that 11 from 180 to give me my 168 degrees. On the cosine side of things, I did my inverse cosine of 0.15. Now I'm doing this in radians. I got 1.42 radians. Now with cosine, I subtract this result from two pi from 360 and I got 4.86 radians. So now, pause the video and sketch the unit circle diagram that relates to each of these problems. So for this one, my theta is 11.5, so I bumped it up 11.5, and this gives me up off the x-axis by 0.2. So my other angle is also gonna be up off the x-axis by that same amount, so my theta is here. So these are 11.5, and then this angle measured all the way around is 180 minus 11.5. Okay, so that's the one with the sine function. Now the cosine function is a little different because we're dealing with the x value. So um, cosine of 0.15 gives me 1.42 radians. So that's pretty far up, but not to 90 degrees. So here's that theta, and here's my 0.15. We've gone 0.15 to the right of the y-axis. And so then what I did is I did my 2 pi, my 360 minus that 1.42, which is this way. So my other theta is measuring this angle here. And again, we're 0.15 to the right of the y-axis. All right, so let's do a little bit more algebra with solving some trigonometric equations. So what I have here is 2 cosine theta minus 1 equals 0. And we're going to solve for theta being between 0 and 2 pi or between zero and 360. So we're gonna use some algebra here. Let's move one over to both sides. So I have two cosine theta equals one. Divide by two, cosine theta equals one half. Take the inverse cosine of one half. Cosine inverse of one half equals theta. Pull out your calculator, find that theta, and then see if you can find the other values of theta that also work for theta between zero and two pi, and put your values in radians. Okay, let's see how you did. I used my calculator in degrees on this one, and I did uh, cosine inverse of one half, I got 60 degrees, then I look at my unit circle, and I can tell that 60 degrees is pi over three radians. Remember, as you go around this unit circle, every 30 degrees is pi over six. So 30 degrees is pi over six, 60 degrees is pi over three, 90 is pi over two, and so on. I wanna to return to this uh, trigonometric identity that we covered in a previous lesson, and that's sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. Now there's two versions of this identity that you're gonna find helpful. If we subtract cosine theta from both sides, we have sine squared theta equals one minus cosine squared theta, and by the same token, if we subtract sine squared theta from both sides, we get cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. Now these two kind of sub-identities are useful. You can use them as substitutions when you're manipulating a trigonometric equation with algebra. So let's do an example where this comes into play. All right, let's solve a complex trigonometric equation. So here we are, minus two cosine squared x, minus sine x plus one equals zero on x is between zero and four pi. So x is in radians, and we're gonna just treat it like a variable in our equation. All right, so now we're gonna need to take a look at this. I've got two trigonometric functions that are different. I'd like to make them the same. That's a nice little trick. And I do have cosine squared x. So remember, that's one minus sine squared x. So I can do minus two times one minus sine 
squared x minus sine x plus 1 equals 0. So all I did is I substituted 1 minus sine squared x for cosine squared x. Now let's go ahead and distribute my 2. I have a minus 2 plus 2 sine squared x minus sine x plus 1 equals 0. I have a negative 2 and a plus 1. So now I'm going to go ahead and move the constant over here. I have 2 sine squared x minus sine x minus 1 equals 0. All right, so now your next step here is a little bit tricky. I'm going to give you a prompt, a hint, and see if you can do this. We're going to need to factor this. This is a quadratic equation. We have twice something squared minus the something minus 1 equals 0. So dig into your knowledge for solving and factoring quadratic equations and see what you get. Okay, I broke this out for you. Here it is just written as a quadratic like you might be familiar with. So instead of throwing the sine squared in there and the sine, I just got rid of that and just called it x. So what we've got is 2x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. That factors down to 2x plus 1 times x minus 1. So use this pattern to rewrite this expression in that way. All right, so converting this to this, the factored form following that pattern gives me 2 sine x plus 1 times sine x minus 1 equals 0. Now, if you remember your quadratics, we do a branch to finish solving. So this one is going to be 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0, and this one's going to be sine x minus 1 equals 0. So go ahead and pause the video and solve these for sine x. All right, so these algebraic steps are pretty straightforward. I just isolated my sine x. For this one, I get sine x equals 1 half, and this one I get sine x equals 1. Now you're going to need to do a little critical thinking step. In radians, what are the values of x that satisfy this one and satisfy this one on 0 to 4 pi? So that's two revolutions around the unit circle. Now this can be tricky, so let me show you how this worked out. I just did my sine inverse, I stayed in degrees, I did my sine inverse of negative 1 half and I get minus 30. Then I jump over to the unit circle to look at what minus 30 is. That's this, it's 30 degrees down from the x-axis. And sine x is minus 1 half, so that means that this distance here is negative 1 half. So that makes sense. That's what we've done. So we've come down. So now we have this other one here, which is also minus 1 half. So this is going to be 30 below the x-axis. So that's 180 all the way around, plus another 30. So that one is 210. So this one is not part of our solution because the range is between 0 and 4 pi. That means no negative angles. So we don't want 30. We want 210, and then this one, whatever that's going to be, and then a whole other cycle, so this one, and then that one. There's going to be four angles that solve that. Now, since it specified our range in radians, we want to give our answer in radians. So remember, 180 is pi radians. So we're going to 210. 180 is 6 pi over 6, so this one's going to be 7 pi over 6. Every 30 degrees is another pi over 6, so 8 pi, 9 pi, 10 pi, that one's 11 pi over 6. And then go ahead and do the remaining two. Another cycle around, so this one, what would you get for that one, that one, and that one? So go ahead, pause the video, see if you can figure that out. Okay, so the way I chose to do this is the next time it gets here is going to be 2 pi radians after the first time. Remember, it's 2 pi radians all the way around. So if we're at 7 pi over 6, we need to add 2 pi radians, which is going to be 12 pi over 6. So I end up with not 12 pi, but 19 pi over 6 there. And then I'm going to add 12 pi over 6 to my 11 pi over 6 to get 23 pi over 6. So these are the three angles that satisfy this equation. Now go ahead and do that one.
All right, this one's a little bit more simple. Um, I just did my sine inverse of one in degrees. I get 90 degrees. That's up here at the top of the unit circle. We've come 90 degrees. Now, when you have sine inverse of one, it's kind of like you know that sine of something is one. And on the unit circle, when you, when you have one, you've got to be at one of these four points on the outside of the circle. So that's another way to think about that. Now I know that this is pi over two radians. So that's our first angle is pi over two. Now our second one is going to be adding two pi to pi over two. So I added four pi over two. That's just two pi. I had to make my denominators the same and I get five pi over two. So now I have my six angles that satisfy this or our equation from the previous board. These are the solutions. So there's six solutions to that equation. Yikes. Now I chose certain ways to go from degrees to radians. You can use other ways. Remember we had some conversion factors earlier in the chapter. You can use those. You can use your unit circle. There's a lot of ways to go. In fact, the unit circle is this really nice self-consistent system that has lots of ways you can circle around and verify your work. Now that you've watched the video, take a moment to jot down any remaining questions so you can bring them to our next class. Remember, you can also come back to this video again and watch it for deeper understanding. If you liked or enjoyed the video, please click like or subscribe down below.